Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You're born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. Welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, here in the Muskogee Media Studios. Got a great show lined up for you this week. Lots of things out there uh, to get to. Uh, specifically, I sit down with a uh, for an interview uh, with the Secretary of Health here at Muskogee Creek Nation, Mr. Sean Terry. Uh, he covers a lot of things, access questions about the hospital, new projects coming up, financial situation, all of that in the interview there. We're also going to sit down with our ongoing series, our Elder Conversations, where we just go talk to an elder. And this week's uh, installment will be Don Tiger, who makes Softkey. Going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so we're excited to show that as well. Also, we visited for just a moment with the Environmental Services Manager, Mr. James Williams, talking about uh, climate change, what it means here at Muskogee Creek Nation. Lots to get to. All of that coming your way. Come right back with us after this first break. And welcome back to the program as we get started this week. Right off the bat, we're talking about Muskogee Creek Nation Department of Health. Specifically, I was speaking with Chief Floyd a little bit afterwards after uh, our conversation last week uh, and as we showed you that of the year-end result. And uh, he was talking about some questions that he was getting from different people in the community, citizens about access at our community hospital. Uh, and he wanted to cover that. They were also getting some inquiries for Mr. Terry, uh, the Secretary of Health, about some of the facilities from different media outlets. So with that in mind, Muskogee Creek Nation Public Relations set up uh, a bit of a conference call type of press conference with Sean Terry. And I was able to get an exclusive interview with him here and uh, basically just sit down with him talking about a, a little bit of everything as I said, access with the community hospital, some of the differences in uh, those uh, facilities and IHS facilities, how it's ran, our financial situation, all of it covering the last year for the Department of Health. 2017 was a really good year. We've uh, stabilized the uh, Altmulgee Hospital uh, financial situation, and we've been able to uh, really uh, ensure that uh, the citizens of Altmulgee and the area are going to have access to care here in Altmulgee in this hospital uh, and fi the finances are stabilized. Um, we've started to complete the construction of the Okima facility uh, this year and we opened up the outpatient side and we expect in the next several weeks to finalize the uh, emergency room um, they're in Okima, and uh, hopefully that uh, is going to be open here very, very soon. Um, we really spent a year uh, in uh, strategic planning, uh, and we're going to really focus on building our access uh, to care. We've hired uh, roughly about six or seven additional physicians into the system this last year, so we had a really good year of recruiting and stabilizing our medical staff. And we're gonna be focused really on patient satisfaction, employee satisfaction, and um, one of the things that we were able to do is put an additional uh, four to five million dollars into contract health, which is really uh, at, at the core of, of what we uh, do here in trying to make sure that our citizens have access to care. 
Because of the unique situation of the tribe owning and operating a community hospital here in Altmulgee that also services the community, a lot of questions come with access about citizens of not only the tribe but the community, and the chief and you all have all gotten those questions about access. Can you talk briefly about the differences between an Indian Health Services uh, you know, facility and a community hospital and what that means for access here. Yes, tradi traditionally a Indian Health Facility, um, which has been a, um, uh, a, a facility that was funded by the Indian Health Service, these facilities have always traditionally been, um, they, they've traditionally been just for people that carried a CDIB card. And with the investment of the Altmulgee facility, the uh, rehabilitation hospital, uh, these, these facilities were really community investments that the tribe made not only to enhance care for its citizens, but also for the entire community. So if you are a non-native and you live in this area, you have access to come to our emergency room. We're going to uh, have the diagnostic care, so if you need a CT or an MRI or an X-ray, you can get that, the lab services, if you need to be admitted into the hospital here, we're going to admit you. So that care is not just for natives. However, we do have the traditional primary care uh, clinic model here in Altmulgee that is just for uh, someone who has a CDIB card. So we really have uh, both sides of that, and I, I know that it's confusing, but we really want to get the message out that the hospital, the uh, Muskogee Creek Nation Hospital here in Altmulgee, uh, the medical center, is for the entire community to access. Can you give us a brief update on the progress and the status of both Okima and you follow facilities. Yeah, so the Okima facility is re really like two facilities in one. You know, it's 110,000 square feet. Uh, we have, uh, the building has gone through substantial completion and we have moved into the outpatient side of the building which uh, you may or may not know doesn't require the Oklahoma State Department of Health uh, certification to open. Um, we are in the final stages of uh, getting those state inspections done, so we hope that's going to happen here very, very soon. I'm uh, reluctant to give out any hard dates because uh, those timelines really aren't up to, to, to us, uh, but we are working uh, daily with the state and with the architects and construction management to wrap that project up. So hopefully here in the next few weeks, we're gonna have the hospital side of that open as well. And then at Eufaula, we're uh, probably somewhere around 65% complete with that joint venture program. Um, and uh, we will uh, be uh, opening that new facility up uh, hopefully sometime late summer of 2018. Last thing I'll ask you, just briefly discuss uh, your, uh, how pleased you are with the fact that we've got some balance within the financial situation at the Department of Health that you would like to share for this coming year. Well, I know that uh, the um, financial um, the financial situation of the Department of Health is something that has been in question and uh, really uh, everyone uh, has worked hard this year on uh, bringing that financial stability back and there's lots of elements that take place with that everywhere from our third party billing to understanding our uh, staffing dollars uh, and just being good stewards of our finances. So I'm extremely proud of what uh, the tribe has done to bring that stability back and security so that uh, our employees uh, know that, uh, and our citizens know that uh, we're spending the money the right way. 
Well, if you've been out and about this week, I hope that you've bundled up lots of layers on as we've seen temperatures in uh, below zero uh, with wind chills uh, factored in, everything like that. Just some extreme cold. We've had schools let out in the area for the cold. Also, uh, flu epidemic outbreak, everything like that. So the weather has been uh, pretty extreme. And I say that to say that it was extreme in the summertime. We've had a few years now to see some extreme weather, weather patterns. Uh, and it gets everyone talking about climate change and, and, and just are we seeing effects here at the Muscogee Creek Nation. You know, in an eight county boundary, you think about a lot of the, uh, uh, we are stewards of the land, always have been as Native American people. Taking care of the land, our water systems, there's lots of them around Muscogee Creek Nation. That's why we have a Muscogee Creek Nation Environmental Services Office. So I went over and talked to James Williams, not only about a new grant they have to combat some of the adverse effects of climate change, but just what it is. The climate change is real, it is here. Um, now there's a difference between global warming and climate change and so you know uh, we lean more on the climate change uh, because it's so many factors uh, that contribute to that. Uh, a lot more carbon in the air, you know they're telling us to reduce our carbon footprint you know, more carbon, uh, less carbon dioxide in the air, but as, as some of the things we can't control, like uh, there's gonna be more people, there's gonna be more cars, there's gonna be more uh, manufacturing uh, to make products for people. Um, but, you know, the way that we're trying to combat that here at the tribe is uh, uh, we're trying to be more uh, green. Uh, we're trying to in initiate the electric cars. Um, we're trying to, uh, uh, just to be a, a little bit better stewards of the, uh, of the land and whatnot. We see the effects of climate change here, even in Creek Nation. Um, we see the influx of uh, the temperatures, uh, like right now. Uh, they're so extreme. Uh, they get so cold, uh, they get so hot for a longer extended period. Uh, you know, back in uh, a couple summers ago, we had the uh, temperatures that went over 100 degrees for X amount of days. And now, just here recently, um, we had it where it was so cold, it was below 32 for so many days. You know, so now we're seeing the extremes of the climate change. Um, we're seeing 100-year floods, uh, when they, what they call a 100-year flood. Uh, you'll have a flood every 100 years. Well, now we're seeing four or five hundred-year floods in a decade. You know, we're seeing more and more of this extreme weather. We're seeing more violent tornadoes. We're seeing more violent uh, heat stress on our, on our, on our grounds. Um, it's soil erosion. There's just a lot of factors that play into this uh, climate change. Um, it's a stress on our elders, uh, extreme heat and extreme cold. It's a stress on our agriculture on our crops, um, our growing seasons are changing a little bit than the, what they used to. Um, it used to be, uh, you go by the farmer's almanac and they'll tell you when to put the potatoes in the ground and you know all that good stuff, but it's not quite that way anymore. Uh, we have to worry about putting crops in the ground and it getting too much water. You know, we have to, we have to worry about our, our harvest season, our, our haying season, our livestock. Um, we're worried about the water in our aquifers being recharged. Right now, um, Texas is the number one state that uh, uses the most water for livestock, but we're not far behind. And so that's a big concern of ours, is about having good water um, to us, to the native uh, folks, and the Muscogee Creek Nation is no different than any other uh, native tribe. Uh, uh, good water, uh, good air, good land, and that's what's taking the effect on it right now, is the climate change on all those. Um, it's affecting our uh, ecosystems, um, say like our birds, uh, migration, uh, butterflies. Um, we're not seeing as many of the small uh, little animals like we used to. Uh, when I was growing up, I won't tell you when, but it was in the 60s, uh, we used to have, catch these horny toads. You know, you're not seeing, those are almost gone. You know, we're not seeing as many squirrels. We're not seeing as many turtles. Our frogs are starting to disappear. It's slowly starting to take effect. Um, if you're out in the, in, the, in, the, in the woods and in the fields, you'll see that. You're not seeing as many um, salamanders, you're not seeing as many lizards, you're not seeing as many of the smaller critters, you know. So that's taking an effect um, on them. Uh, 
uh, because of the different stresses, uh, floods and dry and you know just uh, you never know what the season is going to be. So here at the tribe we're trying to take a, look, a good look at all this. Uh, we have received a grant uh, from the EPA to do a climate change study. Uh, uh, Frank Harjo and uh, GIS department and our department have paired up to do this uh, climate change study. It's a three-year study um, and we will be monitoring our air temperature, soil temperature, water temperature. Uh, we're looking at uh, winds and then we're going to gather some data. Um, we're going to have these uh, uh, different stations throughout the uh, Creek Nation on our tribal properties and we'll be able to start getting all this data. Like we'll be able to tell when the ground, ground temperature changes, when the air temperature changes and see uh, how big a change it is. Because like right now we had like a, uh, a 20 or 30 degree change in one day. You know, I mean, it's just getting so uh, impactful. When rains come now, it's nothing to get five or six inches of rain right now. I mean, once it comes, we get it all at once. It runs off and it's gone. You know, we got to be better uh, stewards of trying to capture that. Uh, we want to we want to irrigate down at our farm, um, and so we're looking at several items of climate change that do affect the Muscogee Creek Nation. Um, we would like to have uh, uh, more educational outreach to the citizens and to our even to our council. Um, to the effects of the climate change and just make them aware that what we're trying to do to help study that and gather data for the Muscogee Creek Nation. I want to thank James Williams for his time over there and uh, all the environmental services are doing. And uh, you're going to want to stay tuned with us at Muscogee Media because we're going to have more and more uh, on that grant and the things that they're going to be doing, some of the testing and quality uh, that they're going to be doing around the eight county boundary. So stay tuned for that. And as I promised in the opener, our ongoing series that we've had here, it's been really successful, really popular on our YouTube channel, is Elder Conversations, where we've talked to some of our elder Muskogee Creeks out there that do different things. Today's installment uh, brings us to Mr. Don Tiger. If you don't know Don Tiger, uh, you probably know his soft key. That's a drink, uh, really a drink that uh, Muskogee Creek Nation uh, citizens for years and years and years, that's uh, really been uh, in their vocabulary. Uh, everybody loves soft key. Some of them like it different ways, but Don Tiger is a soft key maker and he is uh, very passionate about it. And our elder conversations today are with Don Tiger. it I like to share it uh, and I think it's uh, it's it'll always be with me I grew up here in Tulsa uh, my parents are from around the Henrietta area around the North Canadian River and uh, I uh, attended public schools but I also attended Sequoia High School in Tahlequah, and uh, then later on I went to Haskell Indian Junior College, Tulsa Junior College, and Oklahoma City University. We played sports growing up, uh, attended church here, and, and then Dad always took us down south to, down in his part of the country, he said, uh, to meet relatives and, and to get uh, uh, adjusted to like the creek singing, the creek preaching, and just the, our culture there. Uh, we were brought up in church to where uh, our stomp grounds is the hickory ground, which uh, that's where I go to church. I attend church down there at hickory ground number one. I enjoyed growing up here in Tulsa. Uh, we played a lot of sports. Uh, I had uh, four brothers and a sister and uh, we were uh, brought up to be uh, not really partiers, but yet we had a good time at home. And uh, we uh, enjoyed our cousins and you know our relatives and our, our uh, friends that uh, uh, was around here in the neighborhood. But uh, here on the west side in Tulsa, 
it's like a small community to where everybody, when you are Native American or Creek Muskogee citizen, everyone knows, you know, the, the Cherokees are uh, kind of more populated, but, but around here we, we've got our Creek families and we're, we're close knit. My mom was Tehetki. My dad was full blood Stajati. And uh, we were very proud of our, our heritage and our, and our blood. And uh, of course, we took after dad. I'm, I'm uh, got my tan going. My, my hair has always been black and straight and just, uh, just a typical uh, uh, Indian kid, you know. We say Indian, but. Uh, it's, uh, we learn as we get older that, that we're Muskogee. Mom always said, uh, I lost my mom a year ago this August. Uh, she goes, Don, whatever you do, do it your way and you'll have no regrets. And uh, it's, uh, the mistakes will come, but they'll be your mistakes and they'll be fine. Dad, he taught us everything that uh, he could um, to be humble, to, to learn, and to share. And uh, Dad was a great man. I, I, I miss them both. I lost him 12 years ago come this uh, Thanksgiving, but uh, they're with me. And uh, it's, it's good to know that uh, our people stays with us. You know, our, our relatives is, is there that, who guides us through, uh, through our ways. And uh, it's, it's uh, always good to look back, but it's uh, when we can look forward, we don't know what's ahead of us, but we can kind of focus in and, and see, you know, what is out there. My mom taught me probably whenever I was probably in, the, in my 40s, I'm 62, but uh, my mom, she would uh, teach me because she goes, I want to teach you how to cook so you, you don't have to depend on someone cooking for you. And softy, you'll always have softy. You know, that's what they had when they were growing up. It's like they would take a bucket to, with them to go to school, always the church that was always there. And uh, anyways, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it and always, you know, thought, well, I'd, I'd like to make it, you know. I'd be like mom, you know, and, and make, you know, like dad, he loved it. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll try and master it, you know. And uh, I didn't know there was like different uh, lies from the trees that we had. And, and uh, I didn't know you had to pick out all, I knew mom was picking out corn all the time. But I thought, it's like beans, you know, you got to pick through it. And, but now we've got like uh, the, the, I go to like a Mexican store they, that's called Gallo. And uh, it, everyone in, uh, that I do know that, that's in, that makes softy, we are all aware of that now. And, it, and it's a clean corn. And uh, you don't have to, you know, you go through it, of course. But yet, uh, it's already kind of picked out to where, you know, there's only a few pieces that you don't use. So I, I, I used that and uh, I just uh, started cooking it like mom did. And uh, I guess, I, like I said, I was probably in my 40s. And, but now since I, you know, use it in the senior games, you know, as a competitive thing, you know, Who knew that softy would be like a, a sport or, you know, something that would, uh, ho someone that would be interested in, uh, you know, entering a contest with. But uh, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and enter. And, and luckily I won a few times and then and, and came in second once. And uh, it's good to meet everybody that makes it. Everybody eats it in uh, the uh, senior games that we hold. Uh, Every year we uh, uh, we get to see others and get to uh, talk about our you know our games and our activities and and uh, softy is one of the main things that we always want to talk about. And I 
I'm glad to be a softy maker. Um, I, when I do travel with the uh, elders, we, uh, we go to places and, and we meet with other tribes and they want to hear about our softy. That's uh, something that uh, everybody has their own uh, recipes or their own dishes. You know, the, up north they've got like the, uh, the uh, fish. You know, everybody likes the fish up there. Well, down south, we got the corn. And uh, we, uh, we share it, we talk about it. I, I even take it with me when we go on to our trips, like to Alabama and Georgia. I'll go ahead and take some with me. And uh, usually it's our people that are wanting to eat it or drink it, but uh, others are, are wanting to see us eat it and drink it, which, you know, it's the, uh, they know it's probably kind of sweet, but yet it's not. But uh, it's filling, but yet you want to have something to go with it. Um, it's, it's just a, a treat to, to have and, and to be able to share. It's something that's brought from, uh, you know, years, years back. Over the Trail of Tears, uh, over I-75, you know, it's just uh, going back to Oak Mulgee and buying uh, the softy and the, the, the lye and, and uh, to know that uh, our people's been eating this and drinking this for as long as I've known, you know, is uh, I'd say centuries, as long as corn came to us. And, and uh, it's, it's softy corn is different from other corn. I've been out to the Southwest and uh, they never heard of softy, you know, the softy corn. And, and uh, there's sweet corn, there's, uh, you know, corn that feeds the animals, but uh, there's that softy corn and uh, I enjoy it. There's a lot of tigers that uh, has excelled in other areas and, and I feel like if I can excel in softy, I'm doing, I'm doing good work. Well, that'll wrap up another episode of Native News today. I want to thank you folks for joining us, everybody out there that's watching us, uh, not only on the CW1219 here, our home in Tulsa, but also our online audience that watches us. We continue to see subscribers on our YouTube channel. I want to encourage you to keep doing that. You can watch all of our content on demand as you like uh, whenever it is uploaded. You'll get your notifications there. Follow us on all of our social media content, and we got a lot of great things coming up, a lot of things exciting happening here at Mesquite. Media as we are rebranding. So I'll have some news to tell you in the coming weeks about some changes here on the program, but we're really excited about them. Uh, basically getting a more consistent uh, look with our branding and the department, Muskogee Media, it's all happening. So stay with us right here on the program and muskogeemedia.com. For myself and Jared Moore and all the great people here that make it work, we'll see you guys next time.